हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज राफी फ्रॉम प्लग इन इंडिया एंड आई एम बैक फॉर अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ इंडस्ट्री वॉच ऑन द प्लग इन इंडिया यूट्यूब चैनल टूडे वी आर गोन टॉक अबाउट एथ एनर्जी इंडिया पायनियर इलेक्ट्रिक स्कूटर स्टार्टअप एंड देन न्यू जेन थ्री एथ फोर फिफ्टी एक्स मॉडल सो लेट्स गेट राइट इन टू इट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द जेन थ्री एथ फोर फिफ्टी एक्स रेंज रेंज एंड रेंज येस कंग्रेचुलेशन टू ऑल एथ फैंस Aether, so many requests by all of you has finally had an effect, and Aether has offered a three-digit range, hundred-plus kilometer range model. They have boosted the capacity of the battery pack to 3.7 kilowatt hours from what it used to be at 2.9 kilowatt hours. I'm sure this can even be done better, but for now, this is plenty. This will offer a dramatic increase in range if the true range in the old Aether was around 75 kilometers in mixed modes. you should easily be able to get more than 100 kilometers from this pack with a 3.7 kilowatt hour battery pack we will see owners doing 150 plus kilometers in eco mode easily we have seen multiple owners of the ola s1 pro doing 200 plus kilometers with a 3.9 kilowatt hour pack and those who want to enjoy riding only in warp mode can get around 70 kilometers which is not bad at all updates to the drive train have also been made so now the 450x can offer consistent power delivery while climbing hills with two people on board we love such improvements to the drive train finally they have done something very thoughtful which i had to install as an aftermarket accessory in my evs but they've installed a tpms now having native integration of a tire pressure monitoring system with the 450x's dashboard and the mobile app is absolutely awesome This is extremely important as low tire pressure will lead to different experiences while riding. So we believe this kind of native integration is way better than third party accessories and more OEMs need to do this. It's not very expensive to do but really adds to the experience of the vehicle. And more of these things have been put into the Gen3 update. It's an awesome update and the EV owner community is very excited to get this. So Let's look at other aspects of Aether. They have really improved the product, but what about their finances? So Aether Energy recently raised 128 million dollars, which is equal to 1013.6 crore in its Series E round led by the National Investment and Infrastructure Fund (NIIF) and the Strategic Opportunities Fund (SOF) and Hero Motor Corp. This money will be used this year to expand manufacturing facilities, invest in research and development, charging infrastructure and to grow their retail network. The important thing to note is that Hero Motor Corp owns 36% of the company and after this cash infusion this must have risen. They are the largest shareholder. So how do I feel about this? You know one of the big ice mafia companies owning one of the most progressive ev startups in india i'm not too happy about that because we are not sure how hero Mot- motor corp's own vida electric two wheeler brand and aether will coexist the fear is that hero may try to ensure that aether will never become a mass market player aether may continue to offer products in the premium segment while vida will offer mass market affordable evs but i would want aether to also sell mass market products because they are awesome at doing their research and making the product fantastic and to take on big ice mafia by selling millions of aethers it remains to be seen if that would happen now let's look at aethers financials the company's operating revenue grew a whopping 411.9% at 408.5 crores sale of electric two wheelers constitutes 98% of the company's operating revenue income from the sale of services which is provided to customers is around 2.9 crores and these are the sale of accessories the annual subscription plans and so on and so forth expenses as you can see expenses grew to rupees 758 crores in the financial year 22 from rupees 321.6 crores in financial year 21 the cost of the parts and materials are its largest cost center forming 51.7% of the overall costs i wonder where investment in r&d would fit in here how much of the pie does that take 
If any of you have an idea, do write into the comments below and let us know and inform the community as well. This chart shows how losses have been accumulating over the past three years. Now let's try to do some projection guesstimates for next year. We have invited Mr. Manish Agarwal, founder of Zerobill. Zerobill is a clean tech and mobility startup. Manish is extremely passionate about the EV industry and understands financial statements better than me. So let's hear it from him. Hi Rafi, uh, good, good that you asked this question and uh, given us the opportunity to, to guesstimate uh, the some of the projection for the next year. So I, I know this is being done purely on the guesstimate level. And this is done with the intention to uh, remove some of the myths in the EV industry where sideliners always think that EV cannot be profitable. This company has been making so much of loss and all these kind of value projections are a myth. The, in the long run, the I should continue and the EV should not be even to allow to breathe or to uh, invite fundings. And there's a lot of negative environment which is being spread. Uh, if you look at Ethos data very closely, even though they had an operating revenue of just 408 crore, but uh, if you look at that, they have a cost of materials which goes into was 391 crore. So we can take a guess that whatever the cost of material they might have procured might have been used to uh, build an inventory of, let's say, uh, worth about 600 crore. So I I'll give an example for, let's say, uh, for a one crore, if you can buy about, uh, uh, let's say, 60 ethers or something, 50 or 60 vehicles. So we are talking about that in 408 crore, the ether would have sold so many about here is when the cost of material has been purchased it is also been purchased for keeping the inventories for the future so now in this table you will see a gross margin of just eight crores and the net margin is negative because their operating expenses are upward if you look at the operating expenses so uh, their operating expenses are close to 400 crores so and now so the, it's, it's a company which is making loss on the paper but now if you look at their gross margins which they are sitting on or any EV industry which can claim of gross margin because of the government subsidies. So in every Aether or any other electric vehicles which goes out in the market goes with a lot of government subsidies. And uh, and plus the cost of material which typically goes into battery is virtually paid by the government. Virtually. I, I would say 70-80% of the battery cost is recovered. From the vehicle cost, uh, the major component which the companies have after the indemnization of the all components, the cost can be controlled. So whatever the cost today, it will come down. So what we are talking, what we are guesstimating here is that approximately uh, the revenue, if every vehicle would have been sold, Ether might have been able to reach a revenue of 600 crore with a cost of material just being 400 crore. That's a guesstimate because a company like Ether, which uh, has a strong inventory pipeline, that's a guesstimate. So with that, we can find out that the gross margin percentage could be 33%. That's what a healthy margin because of the, this is because of the government subsidies. Now, once the government subsidies stops, and uh, probably the companies to have the similar kind of uh, gross margin, they have to they have to actually decrease their expenses. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about that if their gross margin thirty three percent. Now the question which uh, we started off with is that how do we recover this expenditure at thirty three percent gross margin? So how many units has to be sold by Ather before it becomes net negative company or the expenses do not increase? And what we come up with is in that Ather's uh, expenses or which it has to recover because it has a gross margin 33%, it has to recover is close to 400 crore. That's without keeping in mind that they require any money for expansion. Or without keeping in mind, expansion means the two kinds of money. One is to hire more work so that they can sell more units. We are assuming it is not required. Second is we are not, we are not assuming that the new plant that they are going to open will be required to achieve this goal. So these are the two estimates. Uh, taken into picture. So we come up with the factor that to recover 400 crore of expenses, they require 1200 crore in the revenue. Uh, and then 1200 crore in the revenue would require about approximately 60 to 70,000 of units. Now, is this 60 to 70,000 units achievable? So I would say yes, because if you look at the data from the just two of the players, which are Hero Electric and uh, Okinawa, they have just in the first six months, they have sold close to 60,000. So they already achieved this target and then uh, Ather being in now the new model of Ather being out and the kind of R&D that they have put in, it's obviously a model which is uh, which would be appreciated and accepted more by the uh, by the customers. So uh, so those are the things that uh, being very high that uh, Ather will be uh, basically if they sell uh, approximately let's say 60,000 units, 
then we'll stop making losses and all the money that we will require will go into two things. One is to cover their past losses and second is for the expenditure, which all, all of Indians we require. We are desperately waiting for that. They expand and then they sell in more cities, they sell in more units and uh, create more, spend more and more money into testing and R&D and come out of that initial uh, few hiccups that they had in the battery. That's awesome, Manish. Love that perspective. So I have another question for you. And as you know, Aether is one of the most is the most expensive electric vehicle on market today. And we all know that Aether is selling very well in the premium segment. Do you think it can take more of the pie in the premium segment and in even further increase their sales? Yes, Rafi. Uh, so your question, basically, if I understand it right, uh, your question is that uh, uh, we should compare apple with apples, not with oranges. And then you believe that Aether is in a segment which is premium segment. It has created a niche for a premium segment and all other sales that, that we are counting, be it Hero Electric or Okinawa, their majority of the sales do not come from the premium segment. So is our estimation or is our guesstimation is right that Aether will be able to achieve uh, 60,000 or might be able to cross it because after their full expansion, they, we are talking about 4 lakh units, capacity of 4 lakh units per year. It means an average, even with a 40-50% utilization, they should be eyeing a market of 2 lakh. Right? But is it possible in a luxury segment? So if you look at Aether's data, uh, which was less than 100 crore, and then they have come up with a sales volume of 400 crore, which is 400% of rise, which has not been seen in any other segment uh, in non-luxury. So non-luxury is an EV segment. Uh, non-luxury EV segment in India is a new entrant. And we started our journey with, uh, let's say, with uh, uh, the previous slow-moving vehicles and all that. So growth had been very slow. But the moment the high-end players, be it Tata Nexon or be it Aether or be it uh, TVS iCube or be it any vehicle which is priced approximately 1.5 lakh or Ola or anything of that, you see a trend that there is an aspirational value. So this competition at a luxury segment has created an aspirational value and has pulled the customers up. Uh, so when they could reach from less than 100 crore to 400 crore, so it is very much likely that they will be able to reach 1200 crore with the run rate that they are going with. So thanks Manish for your insights and very interesting estimations. Now I'd like to take a question, ask you a question which is closer to home for you. And we have been following your work with Zero Bill and we'd like to know what's going on. Can you give us an update about what's going on at Zero Bill right now? Yes, Rafi. Uh, so Zero Bill has been on the mission for uh, uh, promoting, uh, reducing the carbon footprint on the, from the planet. And then we have on an year, we have already achieved a target of closing to like about 15 ton of CO2 last year. So we are on a roll. Uh, what we have been doing is we have been setting uh, this uh, standard product of a micro wind turbine and solar panel which produces about 12 units uh, and saves about like about 10 kg of carbon every day. So that's one product. And second, what we are doing is we have recently started our delivery services to Big Basket. On every delivery, on an average, we are able to save a lot of carbon footprint for Big Basket. And the cost of the delivery remains the same. The reliability remains the same. We have been able to break the myth that electric vehicles cannot be used for reliable time-bound deliveries, which are slotted deliveries for players like Big Basket, Amazon Fresh, or even all the things which have the slotted deliveries that because perishable goods under ideal condition must be shipped. Because e-commerce works in a different way. It does not have perishable goods. Most of them are special handling condition rather than the breakage. But when you talk about food delivery, it's a complete different ball game. So Zero Bill has been focused on build, tracking, solving the puzzle of how do you make food deliveries at the lowest cost of uh, the carbon footprint. And the third thing what we are doing is for the companies like Ola, Tata Nexon and other players is creating community charging point for these units. So that's what we are trying to do that uh, helping these companies to grow. So when they grow and then wishing them all the best that when they grow, we'll also grow. So guys, wasn't that great? It's Always awesome to have Mr. Manish on Plug in India channel. I will link Zero Bill's website in the description for your reference. So let's get back to the topic at hand. This video, that's Aether. Is Aether going to be achieving our guesstimation of 60,000 units in the next year and be profitable? I am cautiously optimistic because at the end of July, Aether's sales were around 16,718. They should be able to cross 30,000 units by the end of the year. With the launch of the Generation 3 Aether boosting the sales with increasing awareness, Aether's awesome reputation, they should be able to double their sales the next year to 60,000 units. Plus added to that, the time to delivery should be lower 
because a lot of people are booking Aethers, figuring out that it's going to take too long to deliver and cancelling and going somewhere else. So a large chunk should come to Aether. Let's see. So here is how Aether is faring in terms of sales figures as of end of July 22. They are currently the fifth most popular electric scooter brand in India. Why is Aether unable to do better than say an Ampere or an Okinawa despite having a superior product? First issue, supply chain. This is a big issue for Aether. They are supply constrained. Tarun Mehta, the CEO of Aether did say that their main focus right now is the supply chain and the vendors whose capacity needs to be enhanced. Do remember that India is only now building manufacturing capacity for things like motors, chargers, controllers, and we still don't make semiconductor chips and touch screens, automotive dashboards, lithium cells, all of these things need to be built locally. So building a local ecosystem at scale will take time. Until that happens, it may take many years to reach the 4 lakh capacity that the two factories are potentially capable of. I mean, they have the square footage, but they do need the supplies to put together. Secondly, range. When the Aether 450X was launched back in 2020, we saw many of you were very unhappy because you had felt that the 450 had adequate power but had a poor range. And when Aether 450X was launched, instead of focusing on increasing the range, Aether chose to go after more performance. They have now remedied that in the Gen 3 model. This will sway many people to go for Aether as the range was a limiting factor for them and now with 3 digit range, the sky is the limit. We are excited to test this new model whenever it comes out. Third, pricing. Now the killer issue at 1,94,000 rupees X showroom before all the incentives, the Aether 450X is insanely expensive. They will have to solve the problem of fundamentally reducing the cost structures of components. Tarun did talk about this in a recent interview. Aether's strong, he says, Aether's strongest muscle is its engineering capability. We want to lean on that and rethink all platforms to make the same experience possible with a far lower cost. Note that Tarun stresses on the phrase same experience possible. That is similar power, similar technology, similar bells and whistles at a lower cost. Does this mean we won't see any lower powered variants offering a lesser experience, lesser experience at a far lower cost? Hey Tarun, ultimately we feel that the flagship Aether variant, the 450X, won't generate huge sales for Aether. You will soon have to start planning for a lower priced mass market model. Let's say a model with a motor offering a 3 kilowatt peak, peak power with a 3 kilowatt battery pack and 120 kilometer to range. Reduce some bells and whistles and get the X showroom price before subsidies to around 1.35 lakhs. After central and state government subsidies, sell it for around 90,000 rupees. I guarantee you it will sell like hotcakes. Is this possible? Yes. Will it deliver a lesser experience compared to the 450X? Who cares if it sells and meets people's needs, right? Ultimately, reducing the cost structure is a complex problem for Aether. But they will have to solve this soon because this kind of pricing or strategy will not be viable after two or three years. The withdrawal of government subsidies via the FAME2 scheme for EVs could result in a huge downturn in sales. Aether may have to stop being stubborn about delivering the same experience and do whatever it takes to offer choice to their customers. That's what people want. The higher end is aspirational, few will go for it, but looking at that, they might want to buy the lower end of that same company. Final words. So ultimately, Aether will need to decide, do they forever want to be seen as a performance scooter brand? Or are they willing to get into the mass segment? Let me be honest guys, 95% of people who use scooters don't care about performance that much. They want a reliable vehicle that goes from point A to point B. That is a huge market and Aether will miss out on this if they don't change. Companies like TVS sell more than a lakh scooters a month. Ultimately, the real competition are the big ice mafia companies. If Aether really wants to take them on and sell millions of scooters, they will need to reevaluate and lay down a vision 
for the next three years. Tarun and team, if you are watching this, the EV community is rooting for you. And we are looking forward to the day when Aether beats the big ice mafia and becomes the market leader. What do you guys think? Are Aether doing enough? Do you think they will need to pivot and dramatically increase the sales? Do write in the comments below. Let us know what you think and we'll be sure to pass it on to those that matter. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next time. Namaskar.